Hello, good day everyone. This is Andrew again and welcome to PLC Programming Training for Beginner Part 7. Okay, let's start. Exercise 1. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have two push buttons, one selector switch and two lamps. If selector switch is off and PB1 is pressed, lamp 1 will blink 1 second on, 1 second off. Blinking will stop if PB2 is pressed. If selector switch is on and PB1 is pressed, lamp 2 will blink 1 second on, 1 second off. Blinking will stop if PB2 is pressed. Okay, let's have our demonstration. Let's press PB1. Okay, that's it. Now, let's turn on the selector switch. Then, let's press PB1 again. Okay, that's it. Now, I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself. Then, after that, you can resume the video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. Let's analyze the program first. Now, this is my program. Let's analyze it. By pressing PB1, it will allow M0 to turn on and it will not turn off unless X1 is pressed. And now, because M0 here is on and T1 here is on also, timer 0 will start after 1 second. And because timer 0 is now on, Y0 will turn on. And after that, timer 1 will turn on after 1 second. And because this one is normally close contact, it will turn off. And that will cause T0 to turn off. And because T0 here is off, T1 here will turn off. And that will cause timer 1 to turn on again. And because of that, timer 0 will turn on again after 1 second. And the cycle repeats. Unless M0 here is turned off. And to turn it off, we need to press X1. Okay, that's it. Now let's turn on the selector switch. Then let's press PB1 again. And as you can see, M0 is activated again. But as we notice, we have X2 here. One is normally closed and one is normally open and because selector switch is now on x2 here will turn off and x2 here will turn on and because of that that will make a diversion between y0 and y1 and here t0 will be activated after one second and as you can see here x2 makes a diversion instead of letting the signal goes here it will make the signal goes here. And that is the function of the selector switch. Okay, T1 is now off and that will cause T0 to turn off also. And because T1 is now off here, this one will go back to its initial state. And the only way to turn off M0 here is by pressing X1 again. And that's it. Now let's go to our simulation. Now let's turn on the selector switch and let's press PB1 again. And that's it. Now let's go to our next exercise. Okay. Here, create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have two push buttons and three lumps. Press PB1 to start the process. And press PB2 to stop the process. 
And as you can see here, we have a process here. Lamp 1 will turn on for 1 second. And after that, lamp 2 will turn on for 1 second. Then, lamp 3 will turn on for 1 second. And after that, lamp 1 will turn on again. And this process will continue unless we press PB2 to stop the process. Now, let's have our demonstration. Okay. Now, I want you to post this video and try to do it by yourself. Then, you can resume the video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. This will be my answer to this exercise. Now, let's have our analysis for this program. By pressing PB1, as you can see, M0 will turn on. And because M0 is on, it will not turn off unless we press PB2. And because M0 here is on, and T2 here is on, T0 here is on, that will make Y0 to turn on. And timer 0 will turn on after 1 second. Then, here, because timer 0 is now on, and this contact is on here, that will make Y1 to turn on. And timer 1 will turn on after 1 second. And now, because T1 is on, that will make the normally contact T1 here to turn off. And that will cause Y1 to turn off. And this normally open contact of T1 will turn on. And that will cause Y2 to turn on here. And T2 here will turn on after 1 second. And as you can see, because T2 here is turned on, T0 will turn off, T1 will turn off also. And that will cause T2 to turn off also. And because T2 here is turned off, the normally closed contact of T2 here will go back to its initial state. The normally closed contact of T0 here and T1 here will go back to its initial state also. The cycle will repeat as long as M0 here is turned on. And to stop the cycle of this process, we need to press PB2. Okay, that's it. Now let's have our demonstration. And that's it. Let's go to our next exercise. Okay, let's have our exercise 3. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have two push buttons, one selector switch, and four lamps. Press PB1 to start the process. By looking at the process, as you can see, the process will monitor the status of PB1 and selector switch 1. If the condition here is not met, lamp 4 will blink. And here, I forgot to include in the presentation that this process will only run if the selector switch is on. The only difference here is when PB1 is pressed or not. Okay? If PB1 is not pressed, lamp 4 will continue to blink. But if PB1 is pressed, it will perform this process. Okay, let's have our demonstration. Okay. As you can see on our demonstration, as long as the selector switch 1 is on, lamp 4 will continue to blink. And every time that we press PB1, lamp 4 will stop blinking and it will turn on lamp 1 for 1 second, lamp 2 for 1 second also, and lamp 3 for 1 second also. And after that, lamp 4 will blink again. And the only way to turn off all the lamp is by turning off the selector switch. Okay, I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself. Then after that, you can resume this video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. 
Okay, let's continue. Let's have our program analysis. Let's turn on the selector switch. And as you can see, T3 here is activated after one second. And that will cause Y3 to turn on. Then here, T4 will be activated after one second. And the cycle repeats unless M0 here is turned off. And to do that, we need to press PB1 here, which is X0. Now let's press PB1. And because normally close M0 here is off, Y3 or lamp 4 will not blink anymore. And it will perform this process. It will turn on lamp 1, lamp 2, and lamp 3 one by one. And after that, if T2 is activated here, it will turn off M0. And because M0 here is turned off, that will make normally close M0 here to turn on again. And that will cause Y3 to blink again. And the only way to stop this process is by turning off the selector switch. Now let's have our simulation. Okay, that's it. Now let's go to our next exercise. Exercise 4. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have two push buttons, one selector switch, and three lamps. Press PB1 to start the process. Press PB2 to stop the process. As you can see here, there are two process. The process will start if PB1 is pressed. And the process will stop if PB2 is pressed. And the process that it performs will depend on the status of the selector switch. Now, our selector switch is on. Let's press PB1. Okay, that's it. Now, let's turn off the selector switch. Let's press PB1 again. Okay, that's it. Now, I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself. Then you can assume this video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. Let's have our program analysis first. Now, our selector switch is on. Then let's press PB1. That will make M0 here to turn on. And that M0 will not turn off unless X1 here is pressed. And as you can see, M1 is on. And that will make Y0 to turn on here because X2 is on. That is our selector switch. And T0 here will be activated after one second. And because T0 is activated, and that will cause M1 to turn off. And M2 to turn on. And that will cause Y1 to turn on here. Then after that, T1 will be activated after 1 second. And because T1 is activated here, M3 will be activated. And that will cause Y2 to turn on. And T2 here will be activated after 1 second. And because T2 here is activated, the normally closed T2 here will be open and that will cause T0, T1, and T2 to turn off. And because T0, T1, and T2 is off, normally closed T0, normally closed T1, and normally closed T2 will turn on again. And this cycle will repeat unless M0 here turns off. And the only way to turn it off is by pressing PB2. Now let's turn off the selector switch. Let's press PB1. That will make M1 to turn on. And as you can see here, because the selector switch is off, it will turn on Y2 instead of Y0 here. That's why lamp 3 will turn on first. 
T0 will be activated after 1 second. After that, M2 will be activated and that will cause Y1 to turn on. Then, T1 will be activated after 1 second. And because T1 is activated here, M3 will turn on. And because our selector switch is off, it will turn on Y0. Then, T2 will be activated after 1 second. And that will cause T2 here to turn off. And because all the timer is now turned off, all the normally close contact of the timer will go back to its initial state. And the cycle will repeat unless we turn off M0 here. Okay, that's it. Now let's have our simulation. Now let's turn off the selector switch. I hope you enjoy watching this video and uh, please wait for the next episode of my tutorial. And that's it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please click the notification bell to notify you for new video. Please uh, like and share my YouTube videos. And please like my Facebook page, the Gizgon Mechatronics Engineering Skills Tips, Tricks and Learning. And please click see first on Facebook to notify you for new posts. And uh, thank you again. See you next time.